Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Elaine Harper, or the Diesel Doctor. We are going to now switch over to do a basic explanation of how an engine is uh, constructed. Uh, regardless of diesel, gasoline, uh, into any engine that is built today has basically has to have, if it's a four cycle engine, the same component. Looking at the front of the engine, we have, if you come around here, I'll turn the engine around here so we get better lighting. We have a crankshaft down here, camshaft up here, oil pump could be here, could be here, but again, and also it could be internally. This is, this is, there is a cover that goes over top of this, of course. And the fuel pump is driven from off the camshaft. Uh, base engine it still has remained constant since 1898 when Mr. Diesel invented the first diesel engine. These, it's called diesel because his name was diesel. It is what you call a combustion ignited fuel system. There is no spark plugs as the gasoline engines have to ignite the fuel. The fuel is ignited by the heat of the compression of the piston. Gasoline engines running on a compression ratio of anywhere from 8 to 1, 8 uh, to 12 to 1 ratio, which uh, 1 uh, is atmosphere pressure 14.7 psi, or if you're talking metric, 1 bar. Diesels run with a compression ratio anywhere from 16 to 22 to 1 ratio, so therefore when the piston comes up to compress the air, the air is compressed at a much higher temperature. The phenomenon is that uh, if you spray fuel, diesel fuel at fine enough at atomization, it will ignite. So this is what how a diesel engine runs. The only change that has been done with this big engine, diesel engine, is now the way the fuel is controlled, the, the amount of fuel that is put into the engine is uh, controlled, plus the fact the exhaust now has several different ways of removing particulates, nit nitric uh, oxide, uh, carbon. New diesel engines now, the air that comes out the exhaust pipe in many cases, in many cities, is cleaner than when the oil and the air that is going into the intake. But it is, causes a lot of headaches because some of this stuff that is used to control emissions gives mechanics or technicians and the manufacturer and the customer lots of headaches. So we get back to the basics again. On the front, on the engine, on the engine we have a crankshaft, which is one of those standing there, and we have a camshaft, which controls the opening and closing of the valves. So this is a crankshaft here and it is connected to the uh, uh, connecting rods and pistons. And this is a camshaft. The ratio of this is two of these to one of these. This is the oil pump. This is the fuel pump that supplies fuel to the injectors. Now, a piston and a connecting rod. What can I do with a piston and connecting rod? Huh. This is the connector rod which connects to the crankshaft and it has what it's called an insert. This is a piston and these are the piston rings. These rings are not a 100% seal because they have a gap in them. This gap, of course, when it's in the cylinder, 
which it is closed up, but there's still a slight amount of leakage down by it. And this leakage is known as blow-by. The compression, ratio, the compression of the engine is controlled by the opening and closing of the valves. Now the valves are in the head of the engine. You have an intake valve and an exhaust valve. Newer engines have two of each. Uh, this is a cylinder head right there on the floor that has what they call a four valve system. These are the valve springs that keep the valves closed. And on the bottom side of the head, you have a seat that this valve comes up against. Also, on the, on the cylinder head on a diesel, you have your holes here for the injectors to go into each cylinder. This happens to be uh, Cummings B series, but again, it's, it's basically the same. The camshaft uh, operates, pushes up on a push rod. And the push rod sits up, in, uh, it comes up here above the camshaft, and in the head, there is a, mech is a, a, a rocker arm that uh, is fastened to the head, and the rocker arm also, when it, when it comes to the camshaft, of course, has loads, and as the loads come up, it pushes the uh, rocker up, and that pushes the valve down, which opens the valve. And this is all timed to the position of the piston in the cylinder of the engine. When you have four cycles, you have an intake cycle when the exhaust valve is closed and the piston is going down, which is the suck cycle. Then you have the compression cycle. The next time the piston goes over, over it goes past bottom and starts back up again, the piston compresses compresses the air on top of the piston. Now there's no fuel at that time in the cylinder, only air, which is taken in through the intake of the engine. When the piston gets to the top, or the piston gets nearly to the top, the fuel will inject out of the injector. And this injector on this particular engine these are one of the newer designs, is electronically controlled with a wiring. Now, this fuel is supplied again by this fuel pump on this side. And if you see on this engine, there's a line that runs from the fuel pump up through to this called common rail engine. This is the newer, the newest design of all, basic all engines. And regardless of the name of the manufacturer, it is still used common rail injection. And this is the one that uses fuel pressure in 28,000, maybe as high as 50,000 PSI. Fuel pressure is so high on the engine that they install on the rear of the engine they install a, rear, a, a safety plate right here. So there's this fuel line that goes to number six cylinder happens to rupture. It will save the, the fuel from blowing a hole through the firewall of the vehicle and putting fuel into the driver's compartment or the passenger area of the vehicle. That's what the purpose of that is. That's only to stop the fuel from ripping the hole through the metal firewall because at that pressure fuel will cut metal like a hot knife going through butter.